to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Bible says, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. And if you do this, there will be life to those who find it and health to their flesh. It says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, with me are riches, wealth and honor. Yea, durable riches. It says, I honor them that love me doth not wisdom cry tonight wisdom is crying again wisdom is asking you do you want your life to be the way it has always been wisdom is crying he said i was there when the earth was founded this is in the book of proverbs i was there i i have a track record of the weakness of mankind and if you trust me i will deliver you for the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Oh, I found my way out of the wickedness of this life. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. The way of the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen. When you buy a product, there is something that is written on the product when you pick water or anything. They write something best before. Have you seen that? Best before means if you want to maximize the opportunity and the blessing that this product has, use it, take advantage of this time period. Hallelujah. That means any moment after the given time period, it will either not work to your satisfaction or you will pay a greater price. Hallelujah. Pat Robertson, many of you know him, the founder of CBN. In the days of his youth, he prayed three prayer points. He said, oh God, I'm but a young man. And you have given me such a great assignment. I pray that you give me three things. Number one, give me wisdom. Number two, give me favor. Number three, give me the anointing of the spirit. He said, if you can give me these three things, send me. We neglect wisdom so much. We neglect wisdom so much. And then we run around chasing for the things that only wisdom can give. We waste our time in things that are minors. Things that will come to us naturally if we invest in wisdom. One more time pray and say, Lord, I choose wisdom. I use my mouth and I use my life. I am tired of foolish decisions. I'm tired of the level that I am. And from the depths of my heart, I covet the wisdom of the spirit. Not human wisdom. Not intellectual wisdom that comes to naught. I crave, I cry, I express desperation. For that wisdom that made kings out of ordinary men. That wisdom that made champions out of shepherds. 
that wisdom that made warriors out of weak women I covet your wisdom I covet your wisdom it is life to me I covet your wisdom I express it as a matter of life and death by me kings reign and princes decree justice not by strength by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor they that seek me early find me hallelujah lord as a family of faith we submit our desperation before you we need wisdom we need wisdom distinguish us through wisdom oh god we need wisdom we crave for it thank you for the things that you have done in us and through us at this level but oh god we cry for wisdom in the name of the lord jesus grant us wisdom tonight in jesus name god bless you please greet one another hallelujah again we'll never cease to honor and appreciate great men and women of god in this place please let's celebrate prof thank you sir for taking out the time celebrate pastor williams in a long time hallelujah Please celebrate Shadi's husband, Mr. Ojele, his wonderful wife. Thank you, sir. And Pastor Pete Rock's wife is here, my friend and brother. Celebrate him and celebrate her. You will be somebody's wife, ladies. Celebrate her. Thank you. Hallelujah. Everybody say wisdom is the principal thing. Say one more time. Say it one more time. That means when you get wisdom, it will make you a principality. Oh, I love the wisdom of God. See, brothers and sisters, please listen to me. Look up. Look up. If you pay the price, you see, wisdom is so powerful. You don't need to give somebody to keep it for you and then you collect it. It's not subject to the wickedness of another person. You don't need to refrigerate it. You don't need to warm it. Huh? You don't need to save it in a bank. It has equal value in every nation. Hallelujah. You don't need to keep it in a safe and then be afraid if a thief will come and pick it. When you have it, you have gotten it. It's as simple as that. There are things, see, the apostle said, such as I have. A man can know that he has something. It's not guesswork. You can know that you have something. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I have come to cherish the wisdom of God. Wisdom of God will make you do things that will cause men to wonder. They said, what wisdom is this? May that be someone's testimony. That a generation will look at you and say, what wisdom is this? I cannot believe that with the kind of background you had. Or with the kind of past you had. You are still surpassing standards. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Tonight, please, even if you've never paid attention in anything that I've been teaching, this is one of the nights where I believe God will alter someone's destiny radically. Hallelujah. Radically. What you do not know can destroy you. Are you listening to me? What you do not know brothers and sisters in this realm ignorance is not an excuse what you do not know can destroy you thank you jesus father we thank you help us 
salute your excellency. You have come to make us like you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are taking on the subject of extraordinary success tonight. The Lord put this so strong in my heart. I'm so excited because this is one of those days that you will walk out of this place rejoicing, knowing that your life has become predictable. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm like a bee. My life is a product of many, many anointings. I have gleaned from the wisdom of many men my father called me some years ago and he said you're a young man with gray hair wisdom can add to your status in life wisdom can make a boy called Joash at age 8 to become the king of an entire nation Wisdom can make a feeble person called David to defeat a roaring enemy called Goliath. I cherish the wisdom of God. I cherish the wisdom of the Spirit. Sometimes when I sit down, I just begin to weep and I salute the Spirit of God for the ministry of all the men and the women of God. Who have poured in and invested in my life some of them may never know the impact that they have made in my life but i'm so grateful thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit in your work on earth is done. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit in your work on earth. The Holy Spirit has moved through great and mighty men and women and has opened them to different dimensions of grace in the kingdom. And we remain indebted. Hallelujah. This teaching tonight is very dear to my heart. And I hope that we will receive it and may it change us in the name of Jesus. 
the first thing i want to talk about tonight is just to challenge us on our responsibilities as far as success is concerned the topic is extraordinary success as far as being successful in life is concerned please listen to me you have a role to play everyone say i have a role to play when it comes to the success equation i want you to know that god has a part to play but you also have a part to play please get this it is not all up to god and it is not all up to you we have two extremes in the body of christ when it comes to the issue of success there are others who believe success is purely based on intellectualism and hard work and all of that and they neglect the place of god to their detriment and they find out that they never become successful and then there are others especially those who are spiritual and they love god and they believe that because they are spiritual and they love god and they experience his presence success should just occur automatically both people are in error there is an imbalance are you getting my point when it comes to the kingdom you have a role to play and god has a role to play it is your playing of your role and god playing his role that makes your success extraordinary that makes your success guaranteed praise the lord it's important for you to know this i always say this when i'm teaching on success that it is dangerous and oftentimes destructive to try to share truths with people when they do not see the need to receive it are you getting my point it is very dangerous listen let me tell you something when god started out with me i was so excited at the depths of truth and insight that god was giving me and i made a big mistake and i don't want you to make that mistake and the mistake that i made was that i assume everybody had my kind of passion are you getting my point so every revelation god shared with me i was just looking for just every and anybody to share it with and i saw the way that certain revelations came to me as precious pearls and i carried it and gave people and they dropped it on the floor and matched it they trivialized the depth of the dealings with the spirit never waste your time trying to give information to people who have not seen the need to receive it please get this god is giving us wisdom tonight hallelujah that's why the bible says they that seek me will find me you must communicate your desire and your desperation for god it says you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart is a law in the spirit never waste your time trying to invest your time your energy your resources in people who have not communicated a desire to receive it and don't feel guilty about it there are many parents who spend money trying to pay the school fees of people who are just not interested have you seen people like that you pay money for lesson and you come and find the person just gisting around or playing computer games do not waste your time and your resources on people make sure you probe the sincerity of their willingness to receive is someone learning something this night i used to feel so guilty because i felt if god gives you something you should lavishly give it and you know i became an enemy to many people because i was forcing them to try to get these principles and i just found out that some people are just not interested are you getting my point so learn it tonight treasure the informations that you receive from the spirit treasure your sacrifices don't trivialize your sacrifices you may pick up this message right now as a gift and give someone and the person tells you please i'm busy i'm expecting a call somewhere he's expecting a call that will lead him to make a foolish decision whereas there is wisdom that will save him 
are, are you getting what I'm saying? You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the measure of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you truly are everything. Very important. You have a role to play. And God has a part to play. That's what many of our fathers of faith call covenant. I like to use the word partnership for it. That it takes you. Please never forget this. Never forget this. Your success is not all up to God. And it's not all up to you. You have a part to play. And God has a part to play. And as far as God is concerned, he is more than faithful. You can trust him to play his part. That means the, the, the problem in the equation of success is not trying to coerce God to play his own part. It's to make sure that we understand what our roles and responsibilities are. Are you getting my point? I promised that I was going to touch on something two weeks ago. Let me just touch on it very briefly. The gospel of salvation and the gospel of the kingdom. There is a difference. They are both gospels. But I need you to understand something. The gospel of salvation is the gospel that reveals to you the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Hallelujah. It lets you know that Christ came and he paid with his blood as an atonement for your sins. And that if by faith you accept the free gift, the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, the shedding of his blood, his death and his resurrection, that if by faith you open up your heart, at once eternal life becomes yours as a gift. Are you getting my point now? So under the gospel of salvation, you do not do anything. Any man that tries to tell you that you do things in order to inherit salvation or to receive eternal life, that's not true. The Bible says we are saved by grace and that not of works. Hallelujah. Lest any man should boast. But then the problem is many people camp around the gospel of salvation. The gospel of salvation is only an entrance. It should open you up to other realities in the kingdom. Are you getting my point now? And then you come into the revelation of the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of the kingdom reveals Jesus as king not savior again and it reveals you not just as a child but as an ambassador it is the gospel of the kingdom that opens you up not just to your rights and privileges but to your responsibilities hallelujah the gospel of the kingdom helps you to understand that God did not just save you to sit down moving around and every time there's trouble you just say jesus you died for me i belong to you if you like don't save me and then we don't do anything so we throw all of the responsibility to jesus christ and we just say just sit down and enjoy yourself and let life work for you unfortunately that's not true it sounds so true brothers and sisters it sounds so spiritual but it's not the truth it's not an accurate interpretation of the thoughts of god there is the gospel of the kingdom. And in the gospel of the kingdom, God finds a man. God empowers that man. And God begins to reveal to that man that he, God, has a need. That we were saved unto good works. We were not saved by works, but we were saved unto good works. Not unto laziness. So you understand that there is a responsibility in the kingdom. Hallelujah. It's very important for us to understand this. When it comes to success, it depends on you. Hallelujah. So let's look at the concept of success very quickly. Um, by the way, let me celebrate two people. Um, you have the photos, media. Hallelujah. I must 
appreciate these two great men of God. They have shaped and molded my life. I salute and I honor them in their absence or in their presence. I'm not embarrassed. They have mentored and built me. They have imparted wisdom. I cried for wisdom. They are true apostles of wisdom. Lots of people make noise, but see, wisdom has fruits. Are you getting my point? Anyone can claim to be wise, but there are fruits of wisdom. And I honor these great servants of God. The first of them is Bishop David Oyedeko. I honor him in my life. I salute him as an apostle of wisdom. Hallelujah. I honor him and I appreciate God for the depth of wisdom and the depth of insight. Different people say all kinds of nonsense. Wherever I sit down and I hear you say anything wrong against him, I will get up and walk out of there. I don't care who you are and what you are saying. I don't care what your thoughts are and what your perspectives are. I salute these great men of God. Koinonia, help me. Let's celebrate grace. 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 Hallelujah. I also celebrate a true apostle of wisdom, Dr. Mike Mudok. Oh, what a mentor. What a mentor. What a mentor. I honor him in his absence. I honor him in his presence. I honor his grace. I honor him with my life. I honor the investment of the Spirit upon his life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please sit down. God bless you. Let's get into the teaching very quickly. There is what you must know to take you from where you are now to where God wants you to be. Hallelujah. Number one, let's examine the concept of success. What does it mean to be successful? I'll have to run. There is a lot to talk about tonight. What does it mean to be successful? Success means obtaining or accomplishing or achieving a worthwhile goal. Please write it. Very important. This is a school tonight. Success is obtaining or achieving or accomplishing a worthwhile goal. If you don't have anything to write, use the notepad on your phone. Please write something write something this is a school hallelujah place value on knowledge place value on information in heaven when the apostle was in heaven he said right right don't just hear right because there is only so much your mind can take hallelujah so what is success obtaining or accomplishing or achieving a worthwhile goal one of the things that I've seen in my life and I've seen across different territories, especially in the continent of Africa and even in Nigeria, is that there are many sincere, please listen, many well-meaning Christians who may remain failures for the rest of their lives. Please listen. We're going to examine something very powerful tonight. Why is it that many Christians are failures? So many believers, so many tongue-talking Christians, prayer warriors, sincere Christians that have character, men who love God, very, very sincere people, honest, well-meaning believers, but they never get to accomplish or achieve anything. They never get to transform a generation. They never get to rise beyond the limitations that they found themselves in. Why is this so? Hallelujah. 
and I got to understand something very important and very powerful. Jeremiah 9 verse 24. I was asking the Lord this question and then one day the Lord showed me a scripture that blew my mind. And then I heard one of these men of God sharing this thing again. Again and again. The first person I heard talking about this was Dr. Mike Mudok. And then I heard Olumide Emmanuel again talking about it. Please look up. Jeremiah 9 verse 24. But let him that glory had glory in this, that he what? Understand it and know it me. Hold on. Why will the Bible use? I hope you understand that the, 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 the construction of scripture is very, very, very detailed and very intentional. He said, let him glory that he knows me and then that he understands me. Not just that he knows me alone. Not just that he understands me. And I said, ah, that's the point. There is a difference between knowing God and understanding God. Are you getting my point now? The knowledge of God is what we call in koinonia intimacy. You understand, you, you know his presence. You can sense his presence. You're seeing transformations happening in your life. The anointing of the spirit of God is being felt strong upon your life. That's as a result of the knowledge of God. But when it comes to your success in life, you must understand the ways of God. The Bible says he showed his acts to the nation of Israel. But unto Moses he showed his ways. His principles. The inner workings that produce those results that are seen. So it's not enough to know God. You must understand the principles of the kingdom. And one of my obsessions is to open the body of Christ to understand the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Mike Murdoch puts it this way. He says there are two dimensions to the knowledge of God. There is the person of Jesus Christ and there are the principles of Jesus Christ. The person of Jesus Christ secures you for eternity. The person of Jesus Christ secures your peace. But the principles of Jesus Christ secure your success here and now. Are you getting the difference now? Very, very profound and very important. The principles of Jesus. So, all of the people who we consider to be successful and are not believers have embraced the principles of Jesus. But they rejected his person. They will never accept that these truths that they are working with that is producing this success has come from God. They will never give him the glory. They will never acknowledge him as the Lord of their life. But they, they change the names of these principles. But you know that these are kingdom principles at work. But then we have on the other hand the church. We love God. We know everything about God. We know all the names of God from Genesis to Revelation. But we have rejected the principles of Jesus. So we have pastors, we have leaders, we have all kinds of people who never get to make any kingdom impact in their lifetime. But tonight God is separating us through wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. There are laws and principles that must be understood and obeyed in order to be successful in this kingdom please write it down there are laws and principles that must first be understood and then obey in order for you to achieve true success has nothing to do with age has nothing to do with gender hallelujah it's not about age it's not about your advantage or your disadvantage. Jesus was born in Nazareth. And apparently the Nazarenes had a testimony that they were failures. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? But the best gift came out of Nazareth. Are you following me now? So when it comes to success, please and please deliver yourself from this luck mentality. A lot of people just believe we have been taught by well-meaning pastors, well-meaning preachers that whoever God wants to bless, he will bless. Whoever God does not want to bless, have you heard that?
please be delivered this night in the name of Jesus Christ. It's impossible. Listen, when you understand the laws of the kingdom, you will know why God is love and you will know why God is just. Righteousness and justice, the Bible says, are the foundations of his throne. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. The ultimate equation for kingdom success. Many of us read it, we just recite it, but there is a powerful revelation. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. There are laws, there are principles that must be understood and must be obeyed in order to be successful. Listen, let me tell you something. Please look up. There are many people who hear what I'm saying right now and just make up their mind and say, No, forget it, it's just nonsense. We have seen people who don't know anything and God just bless them. Have you heard preachers like that? I wasn't doing anything. I was just sitting down and a blessing what is your concept of a blessing we're talking about socks i mean sustained success that can be imparted to generations and i'm not talking of money or finance necessarily hallelujah doing big things for the kingdom accomplishing much for his majesty joshua 1 verse 8 this book that contains laws the laws of the kingdom many times when we hear law we are just thinking law of old testament no 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 the laws of the kingdom were there before genesis 1 are you getting my point the laws of the kingdom are not the laws of the old testament no they have been there from the foundations of the earth they are the very principles that heaven is governed by shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shall meditate therein day and night that means do it consistently that thou mayest observe to what it's not enough to confess it's not enough to meditate there is a doing according to how many all not 90 percent the equation of success is so strict that 90 percent is still f for then after you have done this not during not before please help me read that last that that last uh, the, the the last clause there for then are you ready one to read for then thou shall make and thou shall have who will make his way he said you will make your way prosperous that means it is your responsibility if you want to remain at the level you are now are you getting my point now we keep blaming god on things that god has no business one of the things that i have learned in my life is the ability to accept responsibility it's so easy to blame our parents for the way we are right now right many young people we stand and have the gods and the effrontery to insult them and we say our parents they were careless they were this but look at how old you are now you've even forgotten that you are now 35 years doing the exact same thing you were complaining right from when you were 18 and you are still making you are making worse decisions because you are exposed to more opportunities and information many of us like to talk about the government you know people say the money in nigeria how can one person loot 170 million they would have shared it to all of us can i tell you something look up share the money in nigeria equally to everybody i give you 24 hours it will return back to the people that had it initially guaranteed <laughs> guaranteed for then shall thou make your ways what prosperous and you will have good success may god give us good success there is a difference between good success and bad success 
good success is the kind of success that exalts the name of Christ keeps you in integrity and you can, when you kill a man to be rich that's bad success are you getting what I'm saying when you sleep around for money that's bad success when you give bribes and tips in your office for promotion that's bad success the success of many people in Nigeria has a cost upon it because it is bad success hallelujah let's continue very very important I want us to examine certain things very very quickly um, let's look at Jeremiah 6 verse 16 one other thing I want you to realize about success is that success is not coincidence success is not magic success is not luck there's no such thing as that a man said if you wake up and find yourself successful be sure you were not sleeping thus saith the lord stand in the ways and see and do what ask everybody say ask everybody say inquire everybody say pursue ask for the what that means those parts are already there you don't need to invent it you don't need to discover a road i mean to try to invent a road that has been found he said as for the ancient part where is the good way it's only the good way that can give you good success is that true and he said and walk therein you can ask and they can show you and you can sit down and still be looking he said when you find it walk therein what's the result he said you shall find rest for your souls but what is the church saying but they said we will not walk is that not the testimony of many people we will not walk one day god will bless us god is seeing me praying you wait and see and we keep waiting and waiting and waiting hallelujah i come from a lineage of missionaries my grandfather they were the founding fathers and the trustees of the church of christ in nigeria you go to the history and you are checking you will see my mother when they were all small sitting there in the picture and my father too that my, my grandfather hallelujah my blood father was a baptist served god diligently with his life brothers and sisters if if there is any couple that i've seen in my life who are men of character and integrity that truly love god i can tell you my parents it, but it did not change the situation in my family are you getting what i'm saying i knew times when my mother would lock the door you would hear her shouting and crying and praying and at a point i said "Kai god but you self now wow ah, somebody is crying like this to you what you do not know can destroy you hallelujah Thank you, Jesus Christ. I'm going to share with us a few principles. Before I go there, let me just say something quickly. The difference between failure and success is the voice that you have chosen to trust. I must say this before we continue. The difference between your success in life or your failure is the voice that you have chosen to trust. It's not enough to just listen. The Bible said, be careful how you hear. You can hear a wrong voice and believe that voice for years to your detriment. The difference, I can never help you to become successful until I change the wrong voice you are listening to. Adam and Eve kept hearing the voice of God and as long as they heard the voice of God and walked in his ways, they were successful the day they had what another voice is that true lucifer came with another voice and he misled them and the bible says in genesis chapter 3 said and they had the voice of god walking in the cool of the day and he said adam where art thou hallelujah and adam uh, that's three of chapter three or four and he says adam where art thou and adam said i had thy voice but i hid because i was naked what did god say who told you 
that means you started hearing another voice your success in life listen please is highly dependent on the voice you have chosen to trust not just here our decisions in life are based on the convictions that words have brought for us if i convince you right now that if you come and kneel down on this altar you will get breakthrough will you be embarrassed doing it you will just come and kneel down is that not true if i convince you right now that if you slap lawrence your breakthrough will come guaranteed as stupid as it sounds you will find out that there are people who will come passionately they say oh lawrence it's not like i'm a wicked person but i need to the whole body of christ is moving at the frequency of convictions and words and the bible says there is as it were many voices and none of these voices are without effect that means the voice you permit to speak to you is the voice that molds your success unfortunately many of us in the body of christ have received not necessarily wrong voices but inaccurate voices not necessarily wrong but that the equations they have given us were not complete so we grew up with convictions that are not thorough not potent enough to deliver unto us the things that are required and that's why god is helping someone tonight i can never change your life until you are willing to change the voice the convictions that you have trusted and kept hallelujah i'm going to teach on three basic principles number one very important i'm not going to talk too deep in it number one if you want to be successful please listen we're going to talk about the principle of mentorship listen this has become such a controversial issue i have a series just for this and i trust that when god grants grace we're going to deal with it it's, it's been such a controversial issue in the body of Christ. There have been all kinds of imbalances about the concept of mentorship. Many people in their innocence have been misled into all kinds of junks, have been threatened by all kinds of wrong ideologies. But let me tell you a few things about mentorship. Very important. First Samuel 3 verse 12 to 13. Please help us media. We need to be very fast. mentorship is a very important aspect of our lives there are two ways to learn in life number one mistakes number two mentors there are two ways to learn in life you learn through your mistakes or you learn through your mentors hallelujah mentorship is very very important Please pay attention to what I'm sharing tonight if you ever are interested in success in the kingdom. 3 verse 12 and 13. 3 verse 12 and 13. 1 Samuel 3 verse 12 and 13. Thank you Holy Spirit. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? Hallelujah. Alright, let's read together. One to read. And in that day I will perform against Eli all things which i have spoken concerning his house when i begin i will also make an end verse 13 why he said for i have told him that i will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not and he restrained them not there are two ways to learn in life mistakes and the ministry of mentors is so so important second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 very powerful scripture please if you listen to what i'm sharing just three laws that i share tonight it will dramatically change your life second timothy 2 verse 2 everyone please read one to read of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to what teach others also so what i had 
I commit to faithful men and those faithful men teach and commit others this is how the chain of success works in the kingdom a mentor is not just one you submit to and admire that's what a lot of people do in the body of Christ and they call mentorship so wrong a mentor is not just one that you submit to it's not just one that you admire a mentor is not just a man who instructs you a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you obey a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you obey not whose instructions you hear not whose instructions you discuss not whose instructions you pray about are you seeing the nonsense that are done in the body of christ all in the name of mentorship and many people never get blessed you do not see the signature of what they attempt to be representing hallelujah a mentor is not just a person you submit to it's not just a person you admire oh i admire this person and that means the person is your mentor impossible a mentor is not even the person you sit under it's not just the person you hear a mentor is one whose voice you have come to trust as the voice of god in your life this is very very dangerous if you understand it you won't just get into all this flamboyancy that people do in the name of mentorship and confuse themselves into perdition a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you follow and obey a mentor is not one whose instructions you discuss please get this get this get this this is a powerful um, principle about mentorship a mentor is not one who talks to you and you say okay i've had you let me go and pray about it you've had people say all those kinds of junk they say i need to go and pray and confirm you do not trust his voice there is no man in scripture who truly listened to the instruction of a mentor and missed it it's impossible from genesis to revelation you read it is someone getting blessed tonight very important let me share with you a few principles about mentorship that will bless us oh thank you jesus someone is getting blessed in this place in the name of Jesus Christ a mentor is a shortcut to your future mentorship is shortcut to your future experience is the slowest way to learn experience is the slowest way to learn in life if you think everything you are going to get in life there are all kinds of arrogant people who will never listen to any man you don't have any man's books you are reading there are no tips i share the holy spirit for myself experience is the slowest way to achieve it's like going to lagos by trekking you will arrive but you may arrive dead hallelujah a mentor is your coach he tells you what you are doing right and he tells you what you are doing wrong a mentor is not your friend a mentor is not your confidant you see where a lot of people miss it please you neglect this principle i'm sharing just know that you have signed an agreement with failure guaranteed a mentor is not your best friend your best friend loves you the way you are hallelujah but a mentor loves you too much to leave you the way you are this is the difference between a mentor and your best friend your best friend loves you you will make all kinds of blunders and your best friend will say it's all right all things work together for them that love god who are the called because we want your your friend wants to have that relationship and that rapport so they will forbear a lot of things they will overlook a lot of things so your friend you can be in a room with your friend 
and be breaking a lot of laws and your friend can forbear the day you leave your friend and go to another place that's where you see the gravity of your blunders because your friend has is somebody understanding what i'm saying there are many of you that you think you are doing very well because around you are people who can tolerate you to death but mentorship reveals your weakness and provokes you to change a mentor has nothing nothing absolutely nothing to lose by your stubbornness or your lack of listening hallelujah it's not this kind of thing that okay i like this lady and she does something wrong and i want to correct her. i say ah let me correct this lady now and let this thing backfire and say okay no problem god you are that's not mentorship brothers and sisters that's called friendship are you getting my point a man who can look at you and rebuke you and correct you a man who your success does not come as a big deal to him are you getting my point now hmm. help us holy spirit is someone getting blessed listen let me tell you something wisdom does not necessarily come with age you must understand this a mentor is somebody who can correct you i want to say something that will bless you right now correction from your pastor or your leader or your mentor or if you are working your superior is god's protection to you from your next tragedy are you getting my point when when your leader or your boss or your superior corrects you it is god using them to save you from the next blunder and tragedy you are about to make he said my son pay attention don't just hear there is a difference between hearing and listening hearing is just sound listening is hearing with the intention of obedience that's the difference between listening and hearing there are many people who hear all kinds of things i have been more blessed from the men of god and geos of many ministries than even the workers in those ministries they are there working they keep hearing but they never listen is god challenging someone tonight Thank you, Jesus. Mentorship is impartation. Mentorship is impartation. A man imparts his grace, his wisdom. Mentorship is learning through the pain of another person. You are learning through someone else's pain. He already made blunders that you are about to make and he can save you decades of failure and recovery if only you will listen please make sure you are writing in one hour brothers and sisters look at me in one hour i can read somebody's book and gain an experience that took him 30 years of pain and mistakes again and again are you getting my point in one hour i can for paying 500 naira pastor i can receive someone's book and sit down and gain wisdom that took someone 30 years when i read rediscovering the kingdom years ago the book just came out i made sure that i ordered it i wrote a letter to mike uh, miles munro and i told him i've been blessed by your ministry may god bless and honor you and he replied me he said may god bless you use the book i got that book i paid so much when it came into the country i made sure i was one of the first people that got it and i sat down and he said it took him 30 years of the dealings of the spirit but within one day you can get wisdom from the pain of a man is somebody getting blessed do you want to have to be the one to pay every price by yourself your lifetime is not enough to correct yourself until you make it right Is someone getting blessed in this place thank you jesus christ 
A mentor is one who knows already what you need to know. A mentor is one that already knows what you need to know. Not one that is struggling to know what you need to know. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained, not are obtaining. A mentor is one who knows what you need to know. Whose mentorship do you treasure and value? That's what God is asking you. Whose voice have you been listening to to shape your life? I can tell you that this is the reason why you are where you are right now. Whose voice do you treasure and value? Very, very important. Mentorship is so, so important as far as the kingdom is concerned. Very, very important. Listen, I want to teach you how to be blessed from a mentor's life. There is an attitude. Hallelujah. This is where a lot of people are missing it. Please listen. I wrote it down here and let me just read it. I said to be blessed from a mentor's life, you must receive the person of that man of God. Not just the message, the person. I see a lot of people who say forget about the person. Just receive the message and leave him. That's junk and nonsense. Are you getting my point? You must first receive the person of that man of God. I know a lot of people who talk wrong things against men of God and great leaders. They sit down in conversations that tear them into pieces. And then they sit down and want to attempt to get the treasure in them. It never works that way. You cannot sit down and tear a man into pieces and believe that you will receive from that man. The law does not work that way. The first requirement is that you must receive the person. You must be able to trust the voice of God. Mentors are not perfect people. They are people who have knowledge. They are people who have experience. They are people who have grace. If you are not if you if you do not have the capacity to overlook a man's limitations i'll never forget one time i went somewhere and some people were discussing about benny Hinn. shortly when the divorce happened is someone getting blessed tonight they were talking about benny Hinn, and i had the people just shouting and they were saying i'm disappointed in benny Hinn. imagine how can a great man and i just kept quiet i was listening to them We were watching a program and they were just talking, tearing this man down, saying, this generation self, now what is happening? You don't even trust anybody again. And I listened to them. And later on, I called the person. I said, how could you be this unwise? Hallelujah. Over an information you do not even understand. You are not Benny Hinn's PA. You don't know anything. It's easy to sit down and discuss about people, isn't it? It's easy to sit down and watch people play football since there's World Cup. Let me use that example. And say, ah, Nigeria, you did score. Shame on you. That heading, if you just headed, it's easy. Talk is cheap. Until you get to that place, you will see how easy or how difficult it is. It's easy to see a pastor leading his church and sit down and say, Kai, I don't like this. These guys are so boring. This blah, blah, blah. This pastor's wife is not even very, very anointed. Why is she quoting this and that? until the day you have the opportunity you will pray and preach every sermon you can preach in one month and that's when you will know that pastoring is not child's play you will fish you will copy the teaching of every man of god till your congregation can even tell you the message and you will find out that it's just it's just february then you will begin to respect every preacher that preaches every week that you stand on your stage and say ah but is that scripture correct it's easy to stand and judge. Ida Hosa said, never criticize a man until you have done two times what the man has done once. And I listened to them. And I called the person. I said, no, don't do this. If you talk like this, you will never receive the grace upon his life. And I told him, you need to go to God and say, Lord, I am sorry. Hallelujah. 
you must receive the person of that man of god number two you must trust his voice you must trust that his voice represents the voice of god in your life please listen to this i'm not teaching you error nobody obeyed instructions from a man of god in scripture and went to perdition if he's a true man of god You must be willing to submit to his instructions as coming from God. Listen, you never get a mentor give you instructions and you say, I've had you, sir. Let me go and think about it. That's nonsense. Read your scriptures. If you trust that the voice of this man of God is the voice of God, you prove it by absolute loyalty. This looks very childish, but I will show you why so many people do not receive i remember one time when abuja and this particular great man of god we just sat down listening to him and when when i saw that man i kept quiet for hours this man was talking some of my colleagues were just making noise and i kept quiet i was listening to this man and he was looking at me eyeball to eyeball and at a point he said what kind of person are you don't you talk and i kept quiet I was just listening listening and later on he cornered me outside and he said i know what i've seen in the spirit about you pray for me i said i'll pray in my room not here he said lay hands on me i said no i won't do that many foolish young preachers say yes sir you are celebrating my kneel down let me show you what anointing can do see that no this is why many people do not let me tell you success is not about business or job if you do it it accounts for less than 10 percent of the equation of success if you neglect these laws you neglect it to your detriment praise the lord is someone listening it is only when you have accepted the voice and the person of this man then his message his grace and his anointing will be effective in your life. It's amazing how people come and sit down in a meeting, listen to their men of God, and immediately they come out, they sit down in forums and try to discuss and tear everything into pieces and just sit down and say, man, oh boy, that thing this man is saying, this is nonsense. I remember one man who was criticizing Mike Mudok and he was even warning me. He said, be careful. This seed, seed man, everything is seed. Every, what sort of man is that? You will stand and say they should sow a seed into his life. I said, that's all you saw about this man? That's everything you saw about this man? I said, time will tell. Years later, I saw him in the midst of financial crisis. He was reading one of Mike Mudok's book, Why People Do Not Receive Their Financial Harvest. See, let me tell you something about life. <laughs> life can humble any level of arrogance. It's only a matter of time. There are realities that is like a wall. You will box it till you get tired. At that point, hallelujah, Bible says that David cried and cried until he had no strength. He came to himself. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Mentorship creates seven things. And let me just put it, like I said, we have a series and we'll talk on it more extensively. Mentorship creates seven things in your life when you embrace that ministry. Number one, it creates impartation. Number two, it creates guidance. Number three, it creates access. It creates impartation. It creates guidance. It creates access. Number four, it creates endorsement. Number five, it creates promotion or a platform for promotion. Number six, mentorship creates a platform for wisdom. Seven, mentorship creates speed in your life. Take note of this. It was through the wisdom of a dear woman of God that I respect who called me one day. I used to talk about men of God and I will mention their names. 
and with my zeal I would just be talking and the woman called me one day and said my son you are a young man and you have a very long journey to go God is going to use you greatly never criticize a man of God you are too young to know everything around a man of God's life make sure from today and I said mommy God is my witness and in your presence this is the last time I will ever open my mouth and talk about a man of God mentioning his name I will challenge wrong doctrines but not to talk about a man of God wisdom I would have destroyed an opportunity in the height of what God will be doing in Koinonia one day now I will make a foolish decision maybe on air are you seeing that now this is how great people I'm showing you the wisdom and the blessings of mentorship there are many of you who have seen people and you disregard them because you think a mentor is only one who has your kind and level of anointing there are wisdoms that are greater than the realm of anointing levels of wisdom hallelujah I learned silence from one of our boards of trustees I notice every time you are talking to that man he will keep quiet you will talk and say all kinds of things and he will keep quiet. I didn't used to be like that. Especially if God has revealed to me what, what your problem is. Before you talk, I say, please save, save us the time. And he taught me the art of listening. That it is wisdom to listen to a man. See that? Thank you, Jesus Christ. You don't decide or choose your mentor. Let me shock you now. <laughs> mm. Mentorship, just like your assignment, is discovered. You discover them and you are connected to them divinely at certain seasons in your life. We have a series on that and I will teach you. You don't sit down and choose your mentor because you will never choose a man who will flog you. Are you getting my point? You are smart enough. Mentorship is like your assignment. Why will I choose a man who, when people are celebrating me and saying, Apostle Joshua Selman, you look at me and say, young man, no problem, but there is more work to be done. Keep that, all of those accolades and let's work. Do you think I naturally will like that kind of person? Mentorship is like assignment. You don't choose. That's why a lot of people choose somebody and he rebukes them. He said, oh boy, I am seeing that you like women. Ah, what sort of embarrassment is this? And he moves from the name you used to call him, maybe man of God or daddy or papa. Say, sir, please. Ah, I don't like women. What kind of thing is this? I am a prophet or I am an apostle. You are an apostle, I'm an apostle. <laughs> Hallelujah. How can you tell me I like women? Me? And you don't even see me around. He says, I'm telling you, you like women go and work on it say no i don't like this guy let me go to this other one he said you are okay just believe push yourself and then the day something backfires truly you find yourself sleeping around you will now get up and say goodness and this man saw it i told one of my friends something years ago immediately i looked at him i said you have a lot of tendencies and i want you to work at it at that point he even got offended that day but after like four or five years he called me one day he said can you remember something that you told me he said honestly i am embarrassed to even believe that i'm a victim of this i told him no there's no point for embarrassment once you acknowledge something change look let me tell you let me tell you mentorship is so powerful somebody can sit down and look at you while you are bubbling with all your zeal he can see all the tendencies. Oh, I'm a millionaire. Let money come. Oh, kingdom. You will see what will happen. And the person says, make sure you take out time to start praying. Because I see money destroying you. This is not word of knowledge. This is, this is the excellency of pain and wisdom and experience. It's amazing how people come for counseling, pastor. They come on Monday for counseling and they are now coming to seek my advice and they just come, they sit down. Good afternoon, sir. I want to seek your advice. And for 30 minutes, they are just running their mouth and talking and I'm keeping quiet, listening to them. And after 30 minutes, they say, I feel very relieved. And I say, let's pray. Let's pray. 
They say, sir, and, and you know the Bible says in the book of this and that and that and that and that. A lady, I remember a lady came for counseling and I like putting wine on top of my fridge. And she looked at it and said, I hope this is not alcoholic wine. And I just looked at the lady. She believed that was funny. And then I looked. It means you don't trust. You believe that there's something I'm doing hidden. If I stand and we preach and we make altar call and we talk about standing in holiness and truth and you see wine on my table and you look and I'm feeding you spiritually if you cannot trust that the wine that is on my table is non-alcoholic how can you trust that I'm not sleeping around and moving in integrity how can you trust that I'm not going to get anointing from somewhere are you getting the point now so many people have made themselves failures and we keep blaming God Whereas there are irrefutable principles. No man outgrows the need to be guided in his life. No man. At whatever level. No man. You discover your mentors. And you are connected to them divinely at certain seasons of your lives. Mentors are not necessarily perfect people. Please, is someone getting blessed tonight? Mentors are not necessarily perfect people. They are people who have come, who you have come to trust the word and in the instructions of God in their mouth. Now look at me. There is an attitude that you must have every time you are before a great man please listen this is not human worship when you sit before a mentor or before a great man only ask questions and listen when you sit before a great man that's not time for discussion a lot of arrogant people get access to men of God that other people are dying to see. And they sit down and for 30 minutes they are running their mouths and talking nonsense. They are saying we are colleagues in the ministry and we are just talking. Or we are colleagues in this. You sit down with a woman who has trained eight children. And you are a young lady getting married two weeks. You are already talking to her about pregnancy. Say this and that and that. I read it in this book. This woman gave birth to eight children. Out of the eight there were twins and the woman is just looking at you like this yes you went to school i didn't go to school and you sit down you went there and say mommy what advice can you give me now that i'm going into a marital home and you just look and you are wondering after all she was poor i went to school i i, I just returned from america and the woman is just looking at you you believe this woman is too old or naive to understand what you are going through. or maybe a lady is pregnant for instance and maybe she wants to seek advice from a woman because of maybe any complication. Two months, three months into the pregnancy. And you now look at her and say, Mommy, is there any way you can help me? Eight children. Eight children. And you believe is such a level of arrogance. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to honor and recognize greatness when I see it. When I sit before men who have grace, when I sit before men who mentor my life, I, some, I don't even sit on the chair sometimes. God is my witness. I will sit down and my phone, I'm just waiting. Every time you see results in a man's life, there is more than what you can see. Are you getting my point? If it is the equation of God, there is more than you can see. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to the place of destiny. 
I will never forget a young man who came from Kaduna. I remember the guy came and sat down and said, um, there's something wrong with my life. And I told the guy, I need to pray for you. He said, no, that's not the issue. And he was talking and saying all kinds of things. And then I was looking. Immediately he entered. I saw a spirit tormenting this guy. I said, let me, <laughs> I need to pray for you. It happened one time with another lady again from a ministry. I will not mention the name. No, she came and was saying all kinds of things. And this guy was talking, talking, talking. And he said, come on, that he even needs to ask me a question about this issue of deliverance. There's something. I said, please, I'm not here to argue with you. There are so many people sitting outside. Can I pray for you? The last thing this guy remembered was that he knelt down on the floor. And the protocol people, when he got up, he had scattered everywhere. Protocol people were helping him. The guy went back to his ministry. He has a ministry. Ah! He, he sent a text. He said, what is all this? And then he came. They came for Koinonia together with some of his, his followers and the people. And it opened him up to another reality. What you see is not all there is. There can be a lot more. I have taken challenges to men that are greater than me. And to me, those challenges look like mountains. But when I take it there, I, they just look and say, oh, is this it? Do this, do that. This is a simple issue now. And I'm like, goodness, how come I didn't think about this? Just like some people come with challenges and they are complaining. They are shouting. They won't let you talk. They say, you cannot imagine. Where will my school fees come from? Hey, hey, hey. And they are closing next tomorrow or whatever. And you are saying, calm down. Say, where we, do you know what it means to raise 20,000? Calm down. Whereas maybe God has already instructed you to pay the school fees. Just calm down. It's comforting when you can find a man who can walk over what looks like a mountain for you. I cannot tell you how many how people come with all kinds of challenges and they come maybe for counseling and you can see that these things are prolonged for years and as soon as they enter i just start smiling because i know in less than five minutes this will be over whereas you can sit down arrogantly and remain there forever hallelujah help us holy spirit there is always a price to pay please listen there is always a price to pay to follow an uncommon mentor. There is always a price. It will cost you to follow a true mentor. Adaptation is the key to enjoying the ministry of a mentor in your life. Look at me. Never expect a mentor to adjust to your life. You are joking. If you cannot adjust to the person's life, I'll never forget when I went to Abuja one time to see a particular man of God. Four days, I had not seen him. Four days. And God was my witness that I never complained. I said, Lord, thank you. It's a, it's a privilege. This is how people too wait for counseling to see me. And they are not complaining. So I have no right to complain. There are people who call me, hello, hello, this and that and that. And I tell them, okay, we have a counselor. I say, please, I don't have that time. I can't wait. I'm busy. Ah, you are coming to see lecturers, professors, great men. And a young man just comes with his sad jeans. Is there any way we can just see sharp, sharp? Please, I have things to do. Pack your load and go back to your trouble and remain there. There is a price. Never forget this. There is a price to pay for mentorship. There is a price. Apostle Johnson Suleiman was talking and he said something. He said that um, every time he called um, um, Papa Ayo or Richard Jaffa, you know, he would call him and then he would say, Johnson, how are you? And that's how he would leave the phone there. He would be doing something. Johnson Suleiman said, that's how he would wait. You can't complain. You can't argue. You can't off the phone. That's how you wait. And later on, he said, just a minute, I'm coming back. And you will continue doing something else. Some of you would have been offended and angry. And say, do you not know I'm an apostle too? And then as a while, you say, okay, what is it? A mentor is not one who calls you apostle Joshua Selman. You should be able to say, Joshua, come. You see that? Sometimes we are used to the accolades of men. I am apostle. Even if you say pastor, they say, am I pastor? Is A the same thing as P? I'm not, I mean, you better call the correct thing. 
may God help us because if you get this principle alone many of us tonight this is the key to the next level of your life you have neglected the ministry of great men there is nothing embarrassing about acknowledging that there are people who have gone ahead of you praise the Lord pursuit is the only proof of passion there are people who get angry maybe they want to see me and maybe we are away on a trip and then they are angry and they call they say i've been calling you for two days and i say i'm sorry what's the issue they say please i've been trusting god for something in my life and you just finished quarreling me you have been calling me for two days i'm not responding whereas maybe i was preaching whereas maybe i was having time with god you know please and please brothers and sisters it takes humility to rise to the top if you are not ready to be humble get set to remain at that level hallelujah i shared with you my story on how i was already preparing to go to the u.s to go and scrub the toilet of charles and francis hunter before they died i was going for a conference but my mission was to go and scrub the toilet and i i made up my mind that when i got there i would insist I'll tell them my job is to scrub the toilet for two solid weeks scrubbing the toilet every day there are two ways to receive from a man of God your seed and your service your seed and your service you can serve your way into an anointing you can sow your way into an anointing avoid familiarity i beg you koinonia listen to me let my conscience be clear before god that i taught you this avoid familiarity there are people in my life our daddy prof is here and the way the way that that prof respects me so much it even makes me embarrassed i never 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 will take his grace and his ministry and his wisdom for granted never ever hallelujah many of you do not understand the secret listen please listen this is where you may be missing a lot of things you can be with a man of god for a long time never forget who you are talking to it's not enough to talk to people never forget who jesus looked at them and said before your father abraham was i am and they said ah, what are you saying never forget who you are talking to this is not human worship is the law these are the ancient parts that made people great i never get familiar there are all kinds of men of god something something happened yesterday and we're having a conversation one of the top protocol people in one of the reputable ministries i won't call their name just to honor the person he had been trying to reach me and he had called and called and called and called and somehow the call could not get through and you know he looked at his status and he was offended he is really an honorable person you see i mean the direct like pa of one of the great men of god in the country and he's been trying to reach me and for whatever reason when he got to our protocol department we were in we were in in, in a meeting in um in Quara State, and so we could not attend to him and then eventually he got offended and then when he called you know he was speaking and he sounded a bit arrogant but when he told me who he was i would have said oh God, you have told me who you are let me tell you who i am too i just told him i said i'm sorry sir i really apologize i am sorry we do not mean to disrespect the grace or the office that you're working we apologize on behalf of myself on behalf of the ministry immediately the man too said i'm sorry it's not like i just meant to talk like that it's just that you know this and that and that and that never be embarrassed to honor greatness when a great man rebukes you shut up whether he's right or wrong keep quiet don't get up and say i'm justifying myself what is all this human worship after all it is god continue and see how far it will take you when an elderly person rebukes me, when someone who has gone ahead of me rebukes me, all I say is thank you, sir. 
I'm grateful for the opportunity. You see, many of you don't have the opportunity to see the way these things happen because they happen in the secret place. And so you just believe that every time we're just standing, boss, 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 oh, I wish it were so. I wish it were so. I wish it were so. Praise the Lord. Number two, principle number two. Let's hurry up. Goodness, time is gone. The law of value. I'm talking about your assignments now. You want to be successful? Please listen to me. This will probably be one of the greatest revelations you've heard about your assignment. I want you to listen. Your assignment is called the law of value. Hebrews 10 verse 7, please. Hebrews 10 verse 7. God is changing someone's life here in the name of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 10 verse 7. I like us to read it. One, two, read. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is what? It has been written. Your assignment. I have come to execute that which has been written. Write a few points about your assignment. Number one, everything created on the earth solves a problem. We taught this in the school of ministry in uh, uh, the course called personal transformation. Everything created, not these exact words, but then something similar. Everything created on the earth solves a problem. That means everything created has a divine assignment. Everybody say, I have a divine assignment. Whether you know it or not is irrelevant. Just say, I have a divine assignment. Because after this teaching tonight, in the name of the Lord, you will stop escorting others in destiny and start making a definite progress as far as your assignment is concerned. There are so many people escorting others. Jacob had a prophetic grace that he never used until at the point of his death. And he began to prophesy and see into his children and speak over them. Every man in the earth is a working solution to a problem. Everybody in the earth is a working solution to a problem. Say, I am a working solution to a problem. Yes, your existence proves that there was a problem and God sent you to solve it. And brothers and sisters, fulfilling your destiny is solving that problem for your generation. Many have died without solving that problem. And God had to take their, the problems and transfer to other people as a double mandate upon them because some other people were not faithful. The problems you solve decides your reward never forget this money is not a miracle money is not magic money is a formula it's a reward for solving problems i can look at your financial level today and i can tell you you are where you are proportionate to the problems you have solved that's why you will pay a gate man ten thousand right but you will pay a manager five hundred thousand what is the difference the problems they are solving the manager is under AC. He's wearing suit. He has a chef, but you are still paying him 500,000. The gate man is outside. There's no AC in his small room, but you are paying him 10,000. You get angry and switch the people. Let them switch roles for two weeks and see what happens to that corporation. Let the gate man become the CEO. Give him all the files to sign and all the decisions to make. And then you will see the way everything will nose dive within two weeks. So the problem that you solve is what decides your significance. God does not decide your significance. It's God's desire for everybody. He said you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, but you decide your significance. There is no reason to envy any man. There is no reason to be jealous. Every one of us has in us the ability to solve problems. And the degree of the problems that you solve 
decides your significance there are so many men of god angry at at crowd and they criticize crowd and they say forget it crowd does not mean anything a man can leave his state with so many churches and ministries there and travel a great distance to come and meet a man of god they perceive can be able to solve their problems let me tell you you become a money magnet when you master the art of solving problems men will pay you with their life is someone learning something tonight the problem you solve brothers and sisters decides your your reward i'm ministering the word right now i'm solving a problem it's a spiritual problem are you seeing that anybody who says preachers should not be blessed does not know what he's saying whenever you solve a problem according to the kingdom there is a reward whether you sell it or you give it free this is the only reason why i am not charging you for listening is that true because the jehovah jireh of my life who made this law in place will never leave me hungry you want money you want prosperity what problem are you solving whose problem are you solving are you seeing why the wealth of an armed robber is wrong because an armed robber points a gun he's not solving any problem but he wants to be rewarded prosperity is not a mystery brothers and sisters the problems you solve decide your significance when you solve a problem you create a divine debt d-e-b-t you create a divine debt it's like when you solve problems here on earth god is like making god i mean god owes you let me put it that way your assignment is decided by god but is discovered by you let's hurry up your assignment in life is decided by god but it is discovered by you jeremiah chapter 1 he began to speak to the prophet he said while you were in your mother's womb i called you and i ordained you to be a prophet is someone getting blessed now right the most important revelation you need to have about your assignment is what your uniqueness is your lifting is not in your similarity with others it is your difference your uniqueness there are many preachers in nigeria there are many preachers in zaria there are many preachers in kaduna what makes my ministry different what makes my ministry to the body of christ different what listen concentrate on your uniqueness not your similarity when it comes to purpose your uniqueness becomes your edge so if you are selling recharge card brother b is selling recharge card what is your difference what is that distinguishing factor that's what gives you an edge oh hallelujah i thank god for his wisdom how do you discover your assignment let's write it very quickly how do you discover your assignment number one what you hate is a clue to what you have been called to solve write it what you hate passionately is a clue that you have been anointed to solve it anger is the seed for change whatever gets you angry and agitated is what you were designed to change i hate ignorance i hate the effect of poverty on people i hate it with a passion i hate ignorance of the principles of god i hate the fact that people do not recognize the lordship of christ and these things have constructed my passion they have built the framework of my teachings what agitates you take note of the pain and the things that annoy you write very quickly two things that really agitate you that every time you see it you cry and you wish for change there is an anointing there there is always an anointing in the place of pain pain is the birthplace for genuine anointing
Thank you, Jesus Christ. Identify your highest point of anger. Identify your highest point of anger. There is something that agitates you. When you see people go through it, when you see your family members go through it, something in you cries. That's the anointing of the Spirit. Hallelujah. When Moses saw the Egyptians suffering, something in him started rising up because there was a deliverer in him. Are you getting my point now? To an extent that he killed somebody. Have you been ignoring your pain? Do you know that in your pain is the voice of the Spirit? God has been speaking to you that you have been anointed for this reason. There are many of us, God has, has anointed us to be saviors. He has brought us in different mountains to do mighty things for the kingdom. Are you seeing? But we have refused. We have ignored. Please let me have your attention. Don't worry. The Holy Spirit is just doing his thing. God has anointed us in different ways. Take note of your pain. Take note. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Number two, what do you love to talk about most in your life? Oh, that's a clue to your assignment. What do you love to talk about? There are many of you, you sit down five minutes, you have already seen the clothes everybody's wearing in Koinonia. There is grace there. Don't let anybody preach you out of it. There are some of you, when you see children, they can even flog you because of children. There is grace. Your passions, your passion. When the anointing of the Spirit comes upon your passion, I remember when I was in secondary school, I would give everything. The little money that I'll have, I will share it and give everybody. They will buy meat pie, buy everything, and I will suffer like a fool. But it was a passion I could not help. There are many families who build houses and just keep it and say, when a man of God comes to town, let him come and stay. Have you seen people like that? There, is, there are passions. It's just that many of us have not been trained to honor our passions. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I will study my passions. And I take my passions as a voice, as the voice of God. Speaking over my destiny. What is the conversation that excites you? There are conversations that when you start in my presence, I'm going to sleep or send you away. I guarantee you. Even if you mention Jesus in the middle of the conversation. But there are things that excite me. Is it not amazing how somebody can be watching maybe a fashion show, passionately, and you are sleeping and snoring? The interest is just not there. Whereas you put belly in and I can be watching a crusade and I'm watching, I'm struggling with sleep. I'm nodding but I'm, I'm focused. And I say, what is this stress? Sleep. There is something. It's like fire in your bones. Have you been responding to your passions? When you find your assignment, you have found your reward system in life. When you find your assignment, brothers and sisters, you have signed exit out of a world of failure and poverty and mediocrity. And I mean what I'm saying. When you truly find your assignment, when the Spirit takes over your soul, when the Spirit takes over your soul you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul your assignment must become your obsession brothers and sisters you will never excel in any area that has not become an obsession for you your assignment must become your obsession. And let me challenge you with one more thing before we round up this assignment issue. Listen to me. There must be a theme that, that defines the entire scope of your life. Let me tell you what that means. 
every time you mention or a robot what comes into your heart healing is that true benny Hinn, healing is that true billy graham evangelism jj okocha is that true if i mention your name and nothing comes to my mind your difference has not been refined enough hallelujah are you getting my point when you say tiger woods golf right tyra banks fashion people see them all smiling praise god if your life's mission cannot be summarized in one word you do not know it you can say my life's mission is is to bring the rescue the sh the, the lost sheep you know from all the will that look all of that long story there must be a theme that you can live for and die for hallelujah now i want to tell you something very powerful take note of opportunities in your life everything that rises from god camouflages as opportunities take note of opportunities opportunities help you to reveal discover and explore your assignment many of us do not know that god speaks through opportunities god never told david to kill goliath he saw an opportunity and he saw that he had been equipped to maximize that opportunity and he took advantage of that opportunity into an unending world he got a wife for free he got wealth for free because he maximized an opportunity and i want to tell you something god speaks again through favor this is how you know that you have been called in an area never stay in an area where there is no favor it's a sign that god is not there even in the prison joseph was still favored that's a sign that god is with you please and please make up your mind to follow the path of favor there are many of us struggling in areas where it's obvious god has been using the language of favor or otherwise to speak to you favor everybody say favor god speaks to you through favor never stay in a place where there is no favor the next thing you need to know about your assignment is that your assignment is geographical please get this you are not sent everywhere oh lord may tell you in a vision i'm sending you to the nations that is a pregnant statement because you will raise other people who will get to the nations no single man will conquer the whole world you are sent to a person or a group of people you will always be celebrated when you get to the people where your anointing has been sent to bless stop trying to seek for recognition or approval everywhere god has not sent me to everybody it is good for me to understand that god has sent me to a people anytime you get to a place where you have been sent they will receive your anointing there are many people struggling in regions that god has not sent them they are trying to heal the sick they are trying to do everything forcing healing ministries forcing evangel they have run the whole ministry into death they are trying to organize crusades there is no grace there never forget that your assignment has its geography and isaac sold in that land not in any land abraham come i will take you to a place that is where i will bless you brothers and sisters after this program use this weekend especially for those who are trusting god for a place where you will stay you must never sit down and allow job to decide your geography is a costly decision are you getting what i'm saying you must flog it out go on a fast for one day or two days if you can't fast take fruits or something light 
and flog it out with destiny and say oh god i know that my prosperity and my blessing is tied to geography let me tell you something i come from plateau state and the little years i've had serving god and ministry that state never opened up to me they were never opened and prepared to receive of my grace and it bothered me because i was blessing other people and blessing other states and i said lord what is it about this place this is my own very place let me be a blessing to them and god kept telling me again and again they are not ready to receive your anointing there is too much familiarity and do you know what happened the the city of just opened up for me through my teachings they never even knew i was the one it was students from Futmina and Yola and all of that, including my neighbor. I mean, neighbors that we grew up together. They took my teaching, my own uncle. My own uncle listened to one of my teachings and started crying. And then got to find out I was the one. And he cried and said, my own son is in ministry and is changing the world. And I'm here dying. And so that, that familiarity, they received the teaching not knowing it was me. And then when they had now respected the anointing, then God opened up to them, it is this person. Are you getting the point now? That's the reason why, although many of you are anointed, you find out that every time you get home, you just feel ordinary. That presence of the anointing never comes because you are the last born. You are the child everybody knows. Even if you tell them God is saying, they say, shut up. What do you know about God? But the day they are ready to receive your anointing, they will be amazed at the dimension that they will enter. Your assignment is geographical. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Your difference will be rewarded when you are geographically accurate. Listen, listen, please listen. Look up, look up before you write. Let me explain something to you. Um, come, Sam. How many of you agree and believe that Sam is a powerful worshiper? But do you know, as gifted as Sam can be, Sam can be in a territory where his grace is not celebrated and appreciated. How many of you have been in a place you know it's not pride that God has honored you? There are graces, there are giftings, but you are in a territory where nobody can celebrate your grace and God takes you even for a moment to a place and goodness even you you are shocked you never knew that you were that great until you got to that place and you see people celebrating that grace has it happened to anybody you keep singing and when you sing they just tell you go and sit down and you get to a place where people say sorry sir are you living right now please can you come and minister in our church which hotel are you saying say they, they kept me in one car they say please come 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 make make arrangement make and you are saying goodness look let me tell you there are things that people do for me when i go for ministrations and i'm amazed i'm almost saying oh god please let this thing not become human worship and i'm i'm shocked honestly when i'm in my hotel room i'm now looking i'm like goodness ah i would discover every other thing that is left that i've not discovered oh when you are in the geography of your assignment men will pay you in a way that will shock you they will pay for any and everything to receive your grace stop concentrating on places where you are tolerated there are many of you you are everybody tolerates you everywhere there is a place where your grace can be celebrated and I tell you, part of my life's goal as a leader in this ministry is to harness the giftings of people and to celebrate it and to make them great. Sam, God bless you. When we went to Quara State, Sam ministered and he led worship. He was so powerful. When it was the time, I don't know how many times he has seen himself as a man of God. Goodness, that was the first time I saw Sam moving very powerfully in the anointing i mean it was time to minister to the worshipers and you could see the anointing and the grace and these people were receiving after the ministration or oh, everybody almost every i think everybody except they were teasing yerima and they say it was only yerima they didn't come to meet him for counseling because he was a media person he was just snapping but everybody from protocol 
to every one of the people there were piles of people waiting for counseling you know what tells what that tells me those people have recognized their grace but they may come back home and you can just look at them sam how are you and you just shake him and say sam can you please come we have one small fellowship can you just sing one or two choruses <laughs> celebrate greatness when you enter its presence don't be embarrassed don't pretend it's not there i always celebrate them they know it i celebrate the workers that's why we organize dinner at the end of the year for them to honor them to bless them and i use the opportunity to tell them i am grateful it's easy for people to see what god is doing in this ministry and say it's joshua selman it's not true what you see is the brainchild of people who are by far smarter than me greater than me who have decided to submit their gifts to be used for the kingdom and i'm wise enough to know that these people deserve honor are you getting my point now that's why we provide free bus transport because we we respect the gift of god that is in you people and everyone here we never you never see me treat people based on who your father is i don't want to know whether your father is a minister whether you are married to to the to a relation of the president uh -uh. no we no man after the flesh when you come here we treat you with dignity and respect as much as possible is someone learning something please let's finish up on the assignment and touch the last law and then we'll pray just give me 10 minutes and then we'll be out of here when you are where you are assigned nobody can compete with you this is a powerful revelation when you are at the place of your assignment hear me brothers and sisters no man can compete with you i see a lot of preachers struggling i've seen a lot of men of god with all humility wasting their time and their energy trying to do the things that i'm doing i'm doing it with ease because there is grace there i see a lot of people struggling putting themselves under needless pressure and i say why why I never try to do what I am not gifted, anointed, skilled, or trained for. I rather bring in a grace that can function in that capacity and then we receive of that ministry. Now, let me advise you, especially if you are in ministry or you are in any form of leadership, there's something I wrote that is very powerful. You don't give yourself to people. Listen, you give yourself to God and you give God to the people you will die if you want to meet everybody's needs by yourself give yourself to god and give god to the people many preachers are dying and killing themselves they want to do everything for everybody no sir no sir give yourself to god and then give god to the people thank you jesus christ thank you jesus christ number three this is the last and then we'll pray someone's life is changing tonight i tell you you will walk out of this place knowing that you will enter extraordinary success i don't care what the limitations are in the name of jesus christ as we talk about this just just pray can you just pray in one minute and say lord i love your laws i love your laws go ahead and pray just pray in one minute as I talk about this last law. Just a few minutes, our time is gone. And then you will be blessed and we'll pray. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your truth. I love, I love. I love your presence I love I love I love you Jesus I love I love I love your presence I love I love 
I love your dream. I love, I love. I love your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Shibala Katabaladaba. Somebody's life is about to change. First Timothy chapter 5, 17 and 18. The last law we'll talk about is the law of honor. The law of honor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Every time I teach on this, something happens to someone's destiny. The law of honor. First Timothy 5, 17 and 18. Look up everybody. Let's read. One, two, read. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of what? Double honor. Especially they that labor in word and in doctrine. Hallelujah. Let's look at one more scripture. First Peter 2 verse 17. And then I'll teach. This for me is one of the greatest laws of success. It may not be like that for you, but this for me. Everybody read. One, two, read. One more time. For the last time now, one to go. Honor all men and honor the king. Honor all men and honor the king. Wisdom is the ability to recognize difference. But honor is the celebration and the rewarding of that difference. To honor a man means to celebrate and to reward his uniqueness. That's what it means to honor. To honor a man means to celebrate and reward his uniqueness. Please look up. Honor in the school of success is the seed for access. Say it one more time. Everybody, honor is the seed for access. You will never access a place, a grace, an anointing, a dimension of wisdom that you dishonor. Every grace you dishonor lives your life every grace you honor is multiplied in your life never forget this never forget this when the devil wants to drain you of grace he makes you to begin to dishonor the graces around you and you find out that nothing will be the bible says honor all men and then honor the king this is why we take our time to worship god we take our time to honor the king Honor always creates favor. Let me tell you this. If you've been looking for how to create favor in your life, I'm telling you how it comes now. Favor, honor always creates favor 100% of the time. The favor in your life will flow in the direction of honor. You dishonor men, you will never experience favor. Listen, listen. Look at me. This is Pastor, Pastor Pete Rock's wife. Get this. Hallelujah. Pastor Pete is my friend. He's my brother in the ministry. I love him so much. He respects me so much and I honor him so much. This is his wife. Are you getting my point? If I treat his wife well, I have communicated that honor. She will speak well about me in the presence of her husband. And in the presence of another is that true is that true so i am teaching you that the reason why many of us have not seen favor with men is that we have not engaged the law of honor many young people do not honor their parents and you do not know why favor does not leave them to you there's all kinds of disrespect around 
the Bible says, honor your father and your mother. Let me tell you why many young people are struggling in Nigeria. I, I want to be very sincere with you. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. It says, so that your days will be long and it will go well with you. Are you seeing why it's not going well with many people? I know people who stand and look at their parents and insult them. Call their mother prostitute. Call their father drunkard. And it may be true what they are saying. But let me tell you the truth. You dishonor your parents. You are in for failure. Failure that God will not stop. Except you cry for mercy and change. Is someone getting blessed? Never dishonor elders. I don't care what level of grace you get to. As I am like this, if I see an elderly woman that I know carrying something, maybe she went to grind and all of that. I see mothers around. They go to the engine to go and grind by themselves as old as they are. They put it on their head. They are going and immediately they are going. You see the child just bouncing out with one lady he calls his girlfriend or one guy she calls her boyfriend. They don't even know what they are doing. They are just bouncing and they are, mom see ya and they are going and the mother is carrying this. This is dishonor. The Bible says if you don't honor your parents, listen to what I'm telling you. It says it will not be well with you. As simple as that. Hallelujah. Oh, I will say it. I will say it. There are many of us, we have no respect at all for elderly people. There are even people that beat their parents. That one is not just that it will not be well with you. You just brought a curse upon your life. If you ever take your hand and beat an elderly person, especially your parents, whether they speak to you or not, I am telling you scripturally, the Bible says, a man that curses his father, his light shall be taken away and it shall be dim for him. That's what the Bible says. I will never, never rebuke an elder. These are laws. There are many graduates. They thought it's just getting degree. Now you have gotten the degree. Nothing is happening. They thought it's just oratory and all of that. No. They thought it's just reading business books. They've read all the business books. There are no patriarchal blessings upon their lives. No parental blessing. There's no elderly person that has spoken to you and said, let it go well. Hallelujah. The law of honor. Honor creates favor. What is favor? Favor is someone willing to solve your problems for you. That's favor. When someone is willing to solve your problems for you. Whether financial problems, spiritual problems. When you honor men, you have access to their grace. Look, let me tell you. If a door has been closing again and again and again, especially the door to the grace of a man of God, check well, there is dishonor there. The entire Ten Commandments was all about honor. Honoring God and honoring men. God is so obsessed with honor. It's not enough to believe in a man of God. You must honor that man to ever get the grace. I taught this in commanding results. And it's all oh goodness. I cannot begin to tell you the testimonies that have come from people. Many of us do not honor grace. You allow familiarity. I'm not teaching human worship. Hallelujah. Learn to celebrate greatness when you see it. Please write this down. Learn to celebrate greatness. Never trivialize a man's accomplishments, especially if he's spectacular. You say, this woman is a director in, in, in this particular parastata. So what about it? Anybody can be a director. Why are you not a director? It's amazing how we trivialize a lot of things. And she's behaving like this. Is it because she's a man of God's wife? What's the big deal about being a man of God's wife? That's why God didn't make you a man of God's wife. You see that? Celebrate greatness. I, I, I shared this and I'll say it again. 
I will never allow a man greater than me to be in a place and he's paying for something I can pay for and it's within my power to pay. I will fight with that man there or that woman, man of God or no man of God. I will fight till I pay for it. But there are many of us. You come and sit down and you see elderly people standing and you just sit down. Say, I beg, forget, oh, this is not the issue of anything. This is my right. You see a lot of people do that. And we laugh about it. And you find out that in spite of all the prayer and the anointing service and everything, no job, no marriage, no nothing. And you do not know that this is the law we are violating. How many children have gone to meet their parents to kneel down and say, I'm of a marriageable age right now. Please bless me. Release the anointing that made you get married upon my life. You are there complaining that the home is not going well. You, you thought you were playing. Now 35, 36 and counting. Learn this night. God is bringing deliverance for you. It's not everything that is about witches and wizards. We like passing responsibility to the devil. Take responsibility this night. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Honor. There are many men of God. They, they have little ministries. 10 members, 12 members. And you hear the way they preach. And lambast ministers. They had the other day, the other man talking. And do, they know nothing about organization. They know nothing about finance. They don't even have the money to be able to learn finances. They know nothing about organization. Yet they sit down in that little mindset. Local champions. And begin to castigate and, and, and talk about everybody. See, stop it tonight. If you are in the attitude of trivializing people's success, repent tonight. Every time you see success, kill envy fast by celebrating it immediately. The lady is beautiful. Say it fast before the devil now tells you this and that. Ah, I appreciate you. You are a lovely lady. Very pretty. God bless you. That's all. You can never criticize what you have celebrated. Hallelujah. Sam is singing, eh? He's singing, but what's the, what's the big deal, Jare? There's one other guy that sang. It's really not about the other guy. He's intimidated, so he's using the other guy to turn down another person. You, you cannot sing anything. Now you are, you are just looking and saying, well, this lady, what's she trying? She's trying to show us that she can speak English. Once you find yourself criticizing people, you are communicating a dissatisfaction. It's natural with human beings. Manage it through the law of honor. Are you getting what I'm saying? I celebrate men of God. I celebrate vessels of honor generously. Many of us are very embarrassed. Let me tell you a few things that you should never do. Look up please. Never try to introduce a pastor or a preacher in your church or your fellowship and say, this is not a new person, he's one of us, he's, he's one of our friends, I, you know, he's not a, he's a, you know, a lot of people do that. They say, this is one of us, uh, and then somebody who has trained and helped and invested in you say he's, he's an elder uncle, just because he cannot accept that he's a great man. And we begin to use all kinds of English. See that? Or if I want to introduce um, Pete Rock's wife now. She was a member of Koinonia here before he used his eagle eyes. <laughs> you know, all, all of that. And then he came and, and, and carried and all, and all of that. But listen, it has changed. Hallelujah. I can keep looking at her and say this and that. Uh -uh. This is my friend's wife. And she deserves my honor. And I will honor her any day. I will never see her trekking somewhere and not stop the car to pick her. I don't care where she's going. This is honor. Are you getting my point? Many of you do not know the law of honor. I celebrate men in the secret and in the open. I've been following a conference. A conference right now. I had to follow Mike Mudok's conference with David Ibiome. And I've been listening pastor and eating the videos again and again. There's a conference going on in Koza. I cannot attend it. And I've been following it online. Paying the internet right now as I'm preaching. It's paining me but I'm supposed to. 
I'm supposed to have been following the conference. But I sure will remedy for it. Benihin came to Accra. I was happy. I said, I, I, must, I must go and meet him. And I was so excited. When I checked the date, I found out it was miracle service. I said, ah, oh God, you have to compensate me for this. If you are embarrassed about honor, you will not be honored too. Are you getting my point? Please, is somebody learning this tonight? Say in the name of Jesus, I honor all men. Now turn to your neighbor and say, I honor you and I celebrate you truly. Say it. Even if he's pinching you, say it. I know he's not your mate, but say it. I honor you and I celebrate you greatly. Turn to another person and say, I honor you. I know you fought in the morning, but say it. I honor you. Hallelujah. Never trivialize greatness, no matter how little it is. Never trivialize greatness. Never trivialize greatness. They invite you to go and preach. And you know that this is a church that you never who dash monkey banana. You it never is just favor. Don't pretend as though we have been ministering in this kind of churches. Uh -uh. Celebrate the gift, celebrate the grace. Do what God has called you to do. God is giving us wisdom tonight. Hallelujah. Never come into the presence of greatness empty-handed. I'm teaching you one powerful law of honor. Please, look, I can, I can get down on my knees and beg you. If you want extraordinary success, never make it a culture. Do it delightsomely. Do not cultivate the attitude of coming into the presence of a great man empty-handed. If you do not have a seat, look for opportunities to serve are you getting what i'm saying i never see a man of god empty-handed no matter what happens and i'm not talking about this kind of ridiculous seed that was talked about in malachi chapter one that people can't no no you don't bless a great man with leftovers you bless a great man honorably I'm teaching you principles that make for great men. I lift my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name. Father, I lift my hands in worship as I sing glory to your name i never go to see my father or my mother empty-handed never 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 is is a taboo as far as i'm concerned never i never go to greet and see an elderly person if if even if i don't take a gift then it means I'm going to send something. But many of us, we do not understand that these are little principles. This is how the kingdom is built. You neglect it at your detriment. I'm rounding up. There are two ways I taught you to receive from a great man. One is service and the other is seed. If you don't have money, go and look for the man of God's truth. Say, Sam, just early in the morning, just say, Sam, I came to your house. Where are your clothes? Sam will say, no. Say, chill me here. Bring it out. And you carry a bucket. And you are washing Hebrews 7, 7. And without contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the greater. You see a woman, you go to her house and say, Mommy, I came to wash your plates today. Say, no, no, my daughter, there are no plates. Carry the ones that are clean. Say, they are dusty. Soak them again. Lord this is how I will have my home this is how I will be blessed the law of honor you can tap into anointings and leave the realm that you are now hallelujah praise the Lord Jesus now let me say something 
because I know that there are people who are ministers here and there are many who will be listening. Please listen to this. Never invite a man of God, whether a music minister, a worship minister, for a meeting without intentionally planning to honor him. You see, a lot of people do this in the body of Christ. Let me correct it now. Hallelujah. This is an apostolic ministry. We speak to the body of Christ. And I'm speaking to the body of Christ. He must be corrected. Never invite a man of God that you do not have capacity to bless his grace or his gift. Are you getting my point? There are many people who want to bring every great man of God, but they are not prepared. If I am going to bring Desmond as a professional decorator, for instance, I must have the ability to honor his grace. If I cannot, use what you have. Please, is somebody getting blessed? There are so many people, I want to invite this, I want to invite that. There are so many men of God that have been pained because people just invite them, come for a meeting, and they never make adequate arrangement. There are laws and principles in this ministry. There are very few men of God who have invited here. And I can tell you this with all humility. When we invite a man of God, we, we prepare as if it's marriage. Because if we think that grace is not enough to bless us, then we better not invite him. Are you getting my point? When we invite a man of God right from the junction, the protocol department is waiting for him. When he gets there, they pick him. There are people who invite a man of God and it's when he comes, you go and you keep him standing and you are paying for his hotel room. He says, sorry, how much is this room? Is it double or single, standard or all this thing? And the man is, you have been planning for a meeting for a long time. Are you getting my point? Now Pastor Williams is just standing. And you are wondering, or a man of God that you invite, you say, has he come? He's outside, you just say, sorry, please stand up, stand up. Keep these two seats. Sir, you are welcome. What are you doing? You are not intentional about the spirit of excellence. And now I know that many people have not been trained to recognize this. But I want you to know, you will never receive maximally from an anointing that you do not honor. I have found myself teaching and pouring myself in meetings because of the way that I was honored. They honored me from my arrival to my departure. And I found out that there was an unusual flow of grace. I, I went the extra mile to have maybe meetings with leaders or people like that because of honor. But there are meetings you go for, you can't wait for the last session. Immediately it finishes, you just, you just everybody pack your load and let's leave this place never make your ministry like that there are four things that you must look at when you are inviting a man of god let me use the opportunity and say this number one his hospitality hospitality especially when you are it's okay if you are inviting a man of god that is within your region please say it because this has not been taught in the body of christ number one hospitality never carry a man of god and come and frustrate him in a place because you think you are invited no don't do that hospitality hallelujah prepare very well let the man of god eat well if he's fasting ask him don't assume don't say bring only dinner i already know this guy he's always fasting what if he's not fasting that day Number two, prepare to celebrate his grace publicly. Hallelujah. Prepare to celebrate his grace. I'm teaching you how to receive graces. There are places I've gone for once, it will take God instructing me to go there again. When God speaks, then I go particularly just because I'm obeying the voice of God. Otherwise, I will never go there out of personal comfort again. No, no. Number three, let there be the spirit of excellence in your organization. Excellence does not have to mean that you are expensive. Excellence just means the highest level of order. Let there be the highest level of order. And then number four, honor the man. As much as possible, let there be an honorarium. Honorarium simply means that a gift or whatever means of appreciating and celebrating his grace. Just like teachers, you can never really reward mentors and men of God and great men. 
make sure you never bring a man of God. I remember one of my friends who went to preach somewhere. They had been disturbing this guy. And when he went to preach, I'm being sincere with you. <laughs> Immediately he finished. They, you know this kind of, this kind of, um, these wire papers. They just squeeze 500 naira, roll, roll it as if it's bribe. And just say, May we thank you for your grace. Ah, bah. I'm, I'm serious. I'm not exaggerating. Now imagine that that man of God has a wife. Are you getting my point and now this man left his wife for three days this is his job this is where god blesses him and he comes back after three days right and she's happy she welcomes him and the man said we came back from the vineyard of the lord we have done exploits for the kingdom blind eyes were open you know sick bodies and then they just bring this pta you know this pta letter of primary school where they they will leave dash and they put the amount and say honey just to remind you that uh, junior is going to school day after tomorrow and the man of god becomes angry he's frowning at everybody in the house because he is saving the, the sinners but his family is dying never bring a man of god that you are not your capacity don't say i can bring anybody let me tell you the mistake there are many people who try to bring men of god and they overlook these things and when it happens it's like it endorses their error and so they say look even so 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 and so person we have brought him talk more of you you don't know the inconvenience that person went through and he just did it for the sake of the gospel by the grace of god if you see us invite anybody in this house i can tell you at the level of exposure and excellence and finance and blessing that god has given us we will honor and make sure that this man is blessed Blessed enough that if we call him tomorrow, you say, thank you, I'm coming. Everybody say the law of honor. Any anointing that you do not honor, you will never receive anything from. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the breakthrough or the key to your next level is hidden in an anointing. That may not be so far from you from scripture our breakthrough is always closer to us than we can ever imagine the problem is we keep looking far that breakthrough may be your mother in the same house you've gone to every man of god and every prophet and every herbalist but your mother who has that anointing to set you free there are people who again and again they probably have not been healed because they have not honored what God is doing in this house. We are going to pray. These keys that I've shared with you will give you uncommon success. You can see the book that I'm writing them. These, these are keys that I am applying in my own life. And those who have gone ahead of us, who found this ancient path, told us that this is the way. And we confirm by the ministry of the Holy Spirit that this is it. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. We have just five minutes to pray. So I want you to take every prayer point very seriously. Begin to bless God for the opportunity to hear this. Lord, we thank you. Go ahead and praise him. I thank you, oh God, for the privilege of hearing a word that can take me. Now I see why I am where I am. Now I see why things have not been happening in my life. Thank you, Lord, because I've been given the keys to the next level. The Bible says, Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me round about. Outside and inside, pray. Say, Lord, I see that you are no respecter of persons. Pray. Have you been ignoring the ministry of mentors? Men who have experience and grace. Have you been trivializing vessels? Calling them your friends. Calling them your colleagues. Being embarrassed to acknowledge their ability to build and help you. Lift your voice and pray. And say, Lord, from today, I receive grace 
to recognize the vessels that you have put over my life I recognize the grace I take them as mentors indeed I take them as instructors indeed I stop arguing with their instructions I stop arguing with their instructions I receive grace to comply I take their words like the voice of God pray we have just five minutes to pray so pray grace pray for grace never to find yourself talking against a man of God again pray and say Lord I repent from criticizing any great man a man of God a businessman a successful leader my boss in the office my superior I receive grace from today I honor all men I honor the king hallelujah prayer point number two I want you to pray and say Lord that problem I've been anointed to solve reveal it to me my prosperity depends on it my significance depends on it I'm tired of feeling inferior I'm tired of suffering with complex I'm tired of admiring others show me that problem I was anointed to solve that will make my world listen to me show me show me that value I've been anointed to add to my generation when you find your assignment you will become prosperous when you find your assignment you will become distinguished when you find your assignment your background is no longer a factor your education is no longer a factor when you find your assignment your weaknesses are swallowed up by the strength of the problems you can solve I don't care what limitations you have in your life right now your assignment is the key to influence your assignment the problems you are solving when God wants to bless you he will give you greater problems to solve the size of your Goliath determines the size of your throne hallelujah hallelujah the last prayer point and then we'll close i wanted to talk about enemies i'm so sorry i could not i could not talk about it maybe another time but let me just ship one or two things may your life never be so insignificant that your enemies will ignore you are you hearing what i'm saying may your life never be so insignificant that your enemies will ignore you listen when enemies persecute you it is because they have seen the tendency for you to become successful are you getting my point enemies are as important as friends many of you are angry you are doing everything to win approval repent tonight you need enemies your friends decide your comfort but your enemies decide your reward every listen and enemies are announcing that your current season is over and a new season is about to open up without enemies there is no promotion battle is the seed for territory whenever you pray for breakthrough God will schedule a Goliath if there is no Goliath every time you see trouble or challenges change your perception don't cry start rejoicing because that season is wrapping up and another one is opening up So right now in one minute maybe we'll add one more prayer point say lord 
every challenge that has come to my life thank you i see it as an opportunity for my lifting it was a disappointment the relationship did not work but thank you it is for my lifting the promotion did not come but it was for such a time as this thank you for the men who persecuted me thank you for the enemies thank you for the evil reports about me they are announcing me in disguise go ahead and pray enemies are important in the school of success they are as important as friends pray change your mindset about enemies change your mindset about challenges change your mindset about persecutions they do not come to destroy you they come to make you strong they come to lift you higher though weeping and just for a night joy comes with the morning convert your obstacles to opportunities hallelujah hallelujah don't waste your time trying to explain yourself to critics that is such a waste of energy are you getting me when it, listen when a man is determined to criticize you anything you say can be misquoted but silence cannot be misquoted are you get, you can misquote me when i talk but when i'm silent you cannot misquote silence are you getting my point now last prayer point lord i've been disrespecting the careers who have the grace for my next level tonight i receive grace to honor them lift your voice and pray some of you after tonight you will need to send text messages to your pastors to your parents to your mentors to your leaders telling them how much of a gift they are to your life telling them how much their grace has blessed you swallow your pride swallow your pride there is always a man above you swallow your pride there is always a man above you swallow your pride i honor all men lift your voice and pray i honor all men i honor all men i recognize the graces that god has positioned for my next level they may be my friends but i refuse to trivialize their grace they may be my brothers they may be my sisters they may be my genius they may even be people i got born again but i refuse to be familiar with grace i refuse to be familiar with unction i refuse to be familiar I receive their ministry i receive their anointings i sow into their lives i serve the anointing i serve with diligence i serve my way to glory i saw my way to glory listen let me tell you something anytime you are in a place and you hear anybody bringing a nasty conversation about a man of God that you honor and respect, get up and leave that place immediately. Are you getting me? If you sit with me and you are talking to me about our daddy prof and you expect me to sit down and say, wow, I'm, you mean prof is this? I will get up immediately. God is my witness. In fact, I will, you know me, I will rebuke you there and then first and foremost hallelujah you cannot come and sit down and be talking to me about my friend Pete Rock right or sit down and you're talking to me about Oyedepo and this and say see a newspaper they said Joshua Selman got 10 ladies praying <laughs> my mouth wanted to say something and my spirit held it back praise God there are many of you who are experts at hearing things are you serious you mean prof did this i thought it was supposed to be the the, the 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 this and that and that what is all that look let me tell you 
any man that cannot honor a man that you respect does not deserve to be your friend he will kill your destiny and when he kills you he will call men to come and see you dead are you getting my point now you never talk to me about a man that i honor and expect me to sit down and nod my head and say i'm not surprised no as you are saying it i would diplomatically push you out if you don't have anything to say shut your mouth hallelujah praise the lord lift your hands father in the name of the lord jesus i pray for everyone under the sound of my voice from today may they experience your hand in the name of jesus christ i prophesy on common extraordinary success from today as you begin to apply these principles i speak over your life that every door that has been closed over you i command that door to be open right now everyone who is holding the key to your next level i connect you with the anointings i connect you with their graces may you find them may you recognize them may you honor them and may you receive what they have and anyone who is in need of your grace and anointing in the name of jesus i impart grace upon them to honor you may they honor you in the name of jesus christ thank you jesus christ now please keep standing everybody um i know that we're out of time but i would not want to take it for granted if you are here and you've not given your heart to the lord please very quickly you have not made jesus lord of your life this is where it all starts or you've given your heart to the lord but you found yourself derailing you found yourself walking in a path that is not of god right now jesus is calling you to make him lord of your life and to give you a new beginning at the same time those who are worshiping with us for the first time i like you to just follow them and come those worshiping stand here those praying for salvation just come and stand here god bless you my dear god bless you sir god bless you sir god bless you thank you there are people getting born again god bless you just come and stand here if you are giving your heart to the lord if you're a, a new person i want you to just stand here very quickly very quickly celebrate them koinonia we just thought on the law of honor very quickly if you are here for born again don't be embarrassed just stand here or you are rededicating your life to jesus just stand here if you are for both then you can just stand here and we'll pray together hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord please keep coming i honor and celebrate every one of you thank you so much our mommies we see a number of our mothers here and all the people that god brought we truly recognize your grace and we ask that the lord will bless you in the name of jesus this is koinonia and we have a prayer and a blessing for you i assure you that we're going to speak over your life and things will never be the same for you stretch your hands saints of god and ask the lord to bless everyone bless them we bless you with the blessings of the heavens we bless you with the presence of God. We bless you with hunger for God. We bless you with favor. We bless you with results. Let your spiritual life be characterized by mighty and great results. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, bless every visitor, bless every first timer. We love them and we pray that they will partake of the grace that is upon this house. In the name of Jesus, as they return, oh God, may they have unending testimonies to the glory of the name of the Lord. I thank you for what you are doing in their lives. May they grow from glory to glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our home page for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.